welcome everyone. I'm Serena Shadeen, the Executive Director at the Lloydminster Chamber of Commerce, and I'm joined today with our CMP member, Constable Melanie Flynn. So I guess to kind of start out, um, what are the different levels within the RCMP? So you're a constable. Um, what does that mean and how does that hierarchy work? Yeah, so your everyday frontline officers that you usually see on the road, um, they're usually constables or corporals. Um, and I'm a constable. So that's the where you start out um, within the RCMP. And then, um, well, I shouldn't say you actually start out in a field coaching mentorship program for six months. Once you pass that, you're like a level one constable. You're, you're already a constable when you graduate, but you still have to partake in that field coaching component. And then you become a constable and then a corporal. So corporals kind of oversee um, the watches. Like Lloyd Minster here, we have four different watches. So four different uh, shift rotations of members full of constables. So those corporals kind of manage them. And then we have sergeants who manage the corporals um, and then um, a staff sergeant and then an inspector oversees the detachment as a whole. Um, and then we, that's what Lloyd Minster has here in the city. But in, within the RCMP, we have um, like those are all um, usually the frontline uh, officers you're going to see out and about in your community. But then we also have our, um, our commissioned officers. Um, so you're looking at, um, I guess we have a, a we can st start at the top when we talk about commissioned officers, because a lot of people know that we have a, a commissioner and then it kind of goes down from there. So um, the way the hierarchy works, it's very uh, militant, paramilitant style. So we do have a commissioner, a deputy commissioner, um, assistant commissioner, chief superintendent, um, and then a superintendent under that. So they kind of oversee the inner workings of the organization. Um, we have like district, um, so up in St. Paul would be our district area. They have um, um, superintendents, chief superintendents, and then um, we'd have Alberta, we'd have a commanding officer for Alberta, <laughs> and they're <laughs> usually sitting at the uh, chief superintendent rank and then overseeing like in Ottawa, it might be where you find the um, commissioned officers. That's where you're going to find them. So um, that's kind of the breakdown of the RCMP. And with each uh, rank that you move up, there's a little pay bump. So and more a management, a lot of levels, <laughs> a lot of different elements to it. Yes. Um, so how long have you been an RCMP member for? Um, I'm coming up on seven years now, and so I've been a constable my whole career. Um, I've done some general duty work. So when we talk about general duty work, those are your frontline officers who are responding to the 911 calls, um, the car accidents. Um, those are the members that you're going to see pulling you over. Um, we also have like traffic units, so you might see some of them as well. But primarily, all constables. Um, that you're kind of dealing with in this uniform um, every single day in your community. And I've been for, yeah, seven years and uh, I did a post in Vermilion um, and now I'm pretty new to Lloydminster and for seven months I've taken on actually a unit position here. And yeah, we can talk a little bit about the units if- Yes, yeah, I did kind of wonder about that. So, I mean, I guess my knowledge is a lot based on, you know, TV shows and what I learned from there, but how does that work? Like, how do you work in say gang units or forensic policing or all that type of different stuff? Yeah. So, um, there, there are units, um, there's units based out of Ottawa. So based out of federal policing, but also at a provincial level and then at a, a community level. So here in Lloyd Minster, for example, we have units such as um, community policing, which is what I do, um, which includes school resource officer, media relations officer. Um, so those are my day-to-day -day tasks, um, connecting with the community, connecting with um, youth at the school and media. Um, and then we have units like a youth liaison officer. So they primarily connect with youth. Um, we have a unit, <clears throat> the police dog services. So police dog unit, everyone loves talking about. <laughs> um, we do have one here um, as well, and that's a unit that there are some requirements. So 
um, you do have to uh, handle um, a police dog and be, uh, um, go through some training to do that and take some particular courses and um, kind of adhere to the competencies that are required for that unit. I went to the training facility a couple of years ago. It's just, um, it's a couple hours west of us in Lloyd is the canine training facility. And we got to go there for an afternoon and it was really cool. I loved seeing it. They had all the puppies out there. Then they also had like the obstacle courses for the dogs to go through. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So they kind of centralized that training too, which is awesome. So all the PDS officers in this, in the Prairie area, that's where they're going to go to do their training. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then we have um, like forensic identification unit. Um, those guys, uh, I say those guys, that unit, they're, they have um, that type of thinking where they're piecing together puzzles based on physical evidence, right? So they're the ones that are showing up to scene, um, you know, taking, analyzing the DNA swabs, analyzing uh, shoe prints, fingerprints, um, um, ballistics, like if there was a, a shooting or anything like that, they're going to look at um, uh, stuff around the firearm. So that's like our forensic unit. So as forensic unit, are you, are they still RCMP officers or are you almost more of like a scientist in that kind of area? Like um, they're, yep, they're, that? yep. So they're RCMP officers. Um, they're regular members. Um, they do go away to Ottawa and do um, specialized training for, um, I think it's, I think it's six months. I'm not sure. I haven't uh, taking the training myself, but basically any officer can apply for these positions and apply for these units um, if they're interested. And the ones that need that require um, additional uh, selective training to bring your competency levels is what we call it. So making sure you're competent in specific skill sets, um, they uh, can apply for these. Um, we call them call outs. So like if forensic identification services need some more members. Um, or you're interested in that and a training is going on, um, members can put forth their name and get on that type of training and then come back um, to the division with that specialized training and then get positions on those, on those units. And the same goes for um, the police dog services. It's similar to that. Um, we have units like major crime units. Um, so they're focusing on like your person's crime, your violent, your violent crime. Um, we have general investigation services. They're uh, putting in a lot of time um, to make sure, like they're also focusing on the person's crimes and the more high profile files that kind of come across the detachments. Um, and so skill sets like warrant writing, super important, right? Being able to um, calculate all or bring together all the data, all the evidence that's uh, readily available to them um, and figuring out um, piecing together the puzzle, right? And that's that's um, general investigation services. I'm trying to explain stuff. So they're usually in plain closed. They're usually the plain closed officers that you see around. Um, then we have drug units. We have drugs and gang units. Um, we have the provincial driven units like Alert, which is something that is actually starting here in Lloydminster. So that's exciting. Um, and that's a provincially driven unit that focuses on. Uh, gangs and and drugs and um, the organized crime. So that'll be um, an interesting asset to have here at Lloydminster. Mm -hmm. um, but all those units, yeah, there's call, just call outs for them. And basically, if police officers are interested in it, they put their names forth and um, yeah, apply for them. So it's open to any constable. So um, or any, like at any ranking, right? Um, there are just specific competencies is what we refer to them as to kind of uh, get those positions. Good. So for high school students who want to become an RCMP member, um, where do they go for training? How does that all work? Yeah, so every RCM, every Mountie, every RCMP officer trains at Depo, which is in Regina. Um, so Regina, Saskatchewan is where you go for, um, on average, six months. Is and this all of Canada or is this just like Western all, Canada, Regina? All of Canada. Oh, yeah. Cool. All of every Mountie goes through training in depot. Mm -hmm. So there are troops of 32 per troop. Um, 
and you live right there at, at Depot. Um, you live by, you live, you go usually, you go away from your family for six months and live on site there. Uh, the RCMP pays you a little bit while you're training uh, for them and you're there covering off all the basics. So covering off um, applied police sciences, um, police driving tactics. So uh, we have a driving unit there, uh, firearms training, defense tactics, um, what else are we doing? <laughs> Fitness and drill. So when we get dressed up in our surge and um, partake in um, drill, just uh, that happens there. And it's really big. Like when you're at Depo, there's a lot of drill, which is awesome. It's a really nice tight knit community and a lot of um, true, like a lot of teamwork goes into that stuff. So it's really an important part of Depo. Uh, but yeah, everyone around, everyone around Canada, that's where we go. And every Mountie, you can say you, you all have that in common. So it's really, it's, they say it's a brotherhood, but it's becoming, we say a family now, right? So, yeah. yeah. So for like cities have their own police forces a lot of times. So like say Calgary city police, are they trained in the same kind of uh, location in Regina or do they have their own training? Yep. So lots of municipal polices, I can't speak to them specifically, but they have on police science programs that they usually put through or their own training academies um, that they're like Edmonton police would have their own training academy and, and Calgary as well. Um, but RCMP is for like the depot is for RCMP members and we do see some uh, correctional officers come through there as well. So there's other um, law, law enforcement agencies that do utilize depot, um, but it is for the national national police force, national law enforcement. Um, so municipal and uh, provincial, like Ontario police, for example, too, they would have their own training centers in Ontario. Um, so yeah, those are separate. Um, we do see lateral sometimes. So people who maybe were, in, were working with Edmonton police, then they could transfer over to become an RCMP officer, but they're still going to have to go to uh, get some training in Regina as well. So it's just a condensed program if you're making that lateral swing into RCMP from a municipal, so. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, what else? RCMP officers move around a lot. So how does that work? Do you get to pick your posting or are you just kind of placed where you're needed? So when you're coming out of training, <laughs> you can pick um, usually a division. You can select what division, which means Alberta, BC, um, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, New Brunswick, any province, right? So they, they normally um, allow you to have some say into what division, but you have to be ready to go anywhere. Uh, for example, I'm from Prince Edward Island. Um, if I put down Prince Edward Island, the chances of me getting back there, just based on the need for our CMP officers is minimal. Um, so it actually wasn't an option. They'll open, they'll tell you your options when you're at uh, depot, they'll say, when I went through, for example, they said you have BC, um, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba. And that is where the majority of RCMP officers are just because that's where the populations are, right? That's where the, the people are in Canada, uh, higher populations. So um, I chose Alberta and then they plotted me into Vermilion. And you do talk a little bit about what you would like in a lifestyle. If you have a husband who needs a job or has, you know, what type of work does, does he, um, What's he employed in and where can he find work? So they do take a lot of stuff into consideration, but your willingness to go anywhere in Canada is definitely a necessity um, just based on we are a national police force. So um, we do tend to move from time to time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, I mean, you've been in this area for seven years. Um, I guess kind of once you're in a location, do they move you around a lot or does... Yeah, once you're in a location, so for example, this post, like every person's a little, it's individual for every every person, but the RCMP helps with the move, the costs associated with the moves, if they are moving you, and it, that can get expensive, right? And they understand that. So there's some offset there, which is nice. Um, if you want to stay in the area, obviously that's something they take into consideration and they'll try to find a post that's um, considerate for your family at that time. Um, there are like pay incentives and housing incentives sometimes to go to the 
non-desirable posts, we would say. So the Northern Post, stuff like that, because um, RCMP cover off all those, um, the policing for all those uh, places as well. So um, that's it's a big, enti it's enticing to take on those uh, roles if you're trying to make, you know, an increase in pay or um, save some money on housing. They have some forced housing available. So um, that's always nice. So it just depends on your family. Uh, but the RCMP, they work, we work with staffing and relocation within our own organization. So they're able to kind of hear what the member wants, wants to do and make decisions based on that. Sounds good. So um, I guess if anybody's interested in becoming um, an RCMP member, how do, like, what are some things people should take into consideration? Like, I mean, you're going to have shift work. I mean, you're going to mental health things that maybe you guys need to consider, uh, your physical health. So how does that all come into play? Well, RCMP is a very dynamic workplace, which is like exciting. So if you are a person who is not wanting every day to be the same, RCMP is a place for you. <laughs> um, you do have to be uh, physically fit and kind of maintain that healthy lifestyle throughout your life because putting on an extra 50 pounds every day is, uh, tolling on the body. So you want to be, make sure you're capable of doing that. Um, you know, the, those high intensity uh, situations we as police officers sometimes get into like physically, right? So we want to be prepared for that. So physical fitness is definitely something you want to make sure you consider. And saying that when you go to depot, they whip you into shape pretty quick and teach all the healthy lifestyle <laughs> uh, tactics. So um, that goes along with that operational readiness. That's a course at Depot. So you're going to learn that there. Um, mentally, it is, it's challenging and your family needs to be on board with, uh, like if you're, you know, say five years after you graduate, you start a family and you want to have those conversations, be open with your family to say, hey, this is um, a career choice that I'm looking into. Are you on board with that, right? Because you're uprooting your family from time to time and moving across the country. Um, so you want to have those conversations and be aware that that's the reality of police uh, RCMP work. Mm -hmm. um, also shift work. Yep. Yeah, you, so if you're working general duty, um, which is where every constable, every officer starts out is working general duty, usually um, working late nights and like starting at 7 PM, going right till 7 AM, um, lot, depending on where you're at. Um, rural policing is a little different. I've got the chance to kind of do both so far in my career and rural policing, you're on call a lot and you're um, always a police officer, you're always on, on shift uh, when you're, when you've got no, when you're, when you have no one kind of relieving you, um, I guess like scheduled, right? So you want to maintain that stat, that status in your community that you are a first responder, you're uh, a police officer, and that takes uh, mental strength and uh, um, just uh, an understanding of what the RCMP is all about. Um, we also, we're, when you go through training, they talk about the core values of the RCMP. So upholding those core values in your communities that you live in. So being honest, um, having integrity, responsibility, uh, compassion, uh, professionalism and being accountable. Those are the core um, values of the RCMP. So as a person, that's something you have to bring forward and bring to the table every day when you're, when you're a police officer. So. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, is there anything I missed that you want to add in before we wrap up? Yeah, just the application process. I think to talk about uh, if you are interested in becoming an RCMP officer, they actually have um, coffee talks with a recruiter, so coffee with a recruiter. Um, it's hosted out of Edmonton, um, and that happens, um, well, I know one's coming up here March uh, 15th, so um, if you just log on to the rcmp-grc.gc.ca and kind of go to the recruitment section or the application section, you're going to get all that information uh, as to um, what an application looks like, what the process of applying looks like, um, and then, yeah, just connecting with a recruiter and talking through your personal situation and seeing if the RCMP is the right fit for you. Um, and I think if you're eager and looking for a dynamic uh, work environment, it's 
and, and a dynamic work environment that's forever evolving because if you're interested in a, in a specific unit, um, recognizing that your career is gonna advance um, and it's gonna advance in the direction you choose it to advance if you're able to adhere to um, the required competencies. And they're gonna help, like the RCMP helps you with, out, they outline very specifically what type of skill sets are required for what type of units. And um, throughout your career, you're able to kind of attain obtain those throughout experience and um, get the career that is that dream career that maybe you don't you're not so interested in being a constable and working general duty but you're interested in the dive team or the um, drive uh, operating a helicopter or something like you can work toward that right so we have lots of different units and yeah it's a fun dynamic career okay awesome well thank you so much for joining us today have a great day yeah, thank you